Uh, I'll go ahead and introduce you. So today we have with us uh, Caroline Burkle, who is Colin's sister, which you guys all know Colin um, from last semester's Wellness Wednesday. Um, and she is an Olympic medalist and world championship medalist also um, in swimming. And so she was at the 2008 Beijing Olympics and is gonna be talking with us about her experiences as an athlete and also hopefully uh, giving you guys some advice about that you guys can take into uh, your competitions in the future and also just for your, your daily life. So yeah, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. And we're well, super grateful to, to have you also. want to yeah. say a huge thank you for coming on. I've been so excited to talk to you all. And, um, you know, like I said, I, I want this to feel very personal and a place where we can have a conversation too. And you all can ask me any questions you want. And I do want to go over today some um, breathing techniques that we can use and we'll do that after I share a little bit about the Olympics, but that'll be the, the plan. I'll share some about the Olympics and then we're going to go over some of the breathing techniques that the top athletes in the world use and um, how important the breath is to just be able to regulate ourselves. Because I think a lot of times we forget to breathe and we just hold our breath. And then we're in a moment when we're like, Colin, hi, buddy. <laughs> So that will be the goal today. How does that sound? Good. Okay. Sounds Colin's good. probably like, Caroline, I've already heard all this about your life. So, <laughs> um, okay. So I'm going to start off just by saying that I'm really grateful to be here and Colin, thank you for setting me up with this as well. I know that he loves what he does and I love supporting him. So this will be fun. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm from Kentucky. Right now I live in California. And I went, like like he said, I went to the 2008 Olympics um, in Beijing, China. And it was really cool. It was very interesting, though, because in Beijing, we we couldn't really go out of the venue. Colin saw more of China than I did. <laughs> Colin and Clark saw way more of China than I did. Um, and it was, it was such an interesting and unique experience to be in a country that you don't speak their language, that you have to learn how to, and, and meet a bunch of different people and learn how to adapt in those situations that are very high pressure. So we're in the Olympic village with all of these, you know, amazing athletes. Um, and I'm going to tell you a quick story. My second day there, I walk into the cafeteria and I'm, first of all, there's food from every country. You have like Italian food and then McDonald's and then uh, American food and then Chinese food and Japanese food and all the different countries foods. So I remember I was like, okay, we'll just get American food. Cause we didn't know what to eat, you know, before we raced and we didn't know, if we, we didn't want to get off of our routine. And, um, I'm in line, I'm in line and, and with my, my fellow swimmer and we get out of line and we go sit down at a table. And the person behind us in line that we didn't know who that was at the time was Usain Bolt. <laughs> and he comes over and sits down with us. And we didn't know who he was. Like, you know, we didn't know who he was at the time. None of us had competed yet. You know, we were all just there. We'd just gotten there. And, you know, we didn't pay attention to what was going on. Nobody knew anything going on. And if and Colin can vouch for this, like, I never knew what was going on with my, with anybody. I only knew like how I felt. I didn't know times. I didn't know my competition. I didn't know any of that. So, so I'm sitting down, we're having this conversation with this guy. He's really funny. He's really nice. He's really awesome. And at the very end, we were like, he's like, oh yeah, my name is Usain. And we're like, oh, nice to meet you. The next, like two days later, he goes to the world record. And that was the one that was like, where he did like the, you know, the, the hand signal that became famous. And I'll never forget, like we saw him in the cafeteria after that. And I was like, dude, you didn't tell us you were that good. <laughs> we didn't know you were, we didn't know who you were. So that was, that was one of the best memories from the Olympic village. Cause you meet everybody and there's so many people there. Um, so 
my experience as an athlete overall was really positive. I did have a lot of struggles from times with my confidence and, um, especially at the Olympics and after the Olympics, I struggled a lot with my confidence. I struggled a lot with my self-esteem. Um, I, you know, everyone always thinks Olympians are indestructible. You have no problems. You have no worries. You're just so good. Nothing bothers you. And that definitely isn't true. First of all, we're humans just like everyone else. And, and, but the, the feeling of pressure that I had and I put on myself and also the feeling of, um, expectation that I felt that the whole world had of me really weighed down on me a lot. And that caused me to have a lot of worries and fears, um, about myself. And I struggled with that throughout my career. And I also struggled feeling misunderstood. Now, I don't know about you all, and I would love to hear from some of you, but I, as an athlete, didn't, I wasn't the same as what I thought an athlete should be. I wasn't like, oh, I'm going to just be so intense and so competitive. And so, you know, like that just wasn't me. I had a lot of fun. I was happy go lucky. I performed my best when I was laughing and enjoying myself because I was also focused and knew what I wanted, but I, but I knew how to enjoy myself in that way. And so sometimes I felt like nobody would understand that was like normal for me, you know? Um, does anybody else have any of that sometimes where you just feel like, have you ever questioned, like, should I be more serious about my com competition or like, do I, is having fun? Okay. Sometimes that's a question we have is, is having fun. Okay. And yes, it absolutely is. It's totally okay. Because we know that we can focus when we need to focus, but that was something that I really had a hard time with from time to time was just feeling like, am I doing things right? Like everybody else wants me to do. And so what I learned from that is that every single human being on this planet is different. And we all have different ways of doing things, no matter what. And your way is perfectly okay. Because as long as you are continuing to grow and understand how you can be a great athlete and a great friend and a great partner and a great sister, brother, whom a student, whatever you are, that is the most important thing is like, however you operate is how you operate. And Colin, I know you and I have talked about this a lot, right? just like how you, yeah, like because Colin and I bonded when we were younger about, you know, doing things your way that other people may not understand is okay. So long as you take feedback and understand how to make yourself better, staying true to you is important. So how many of you, how many of you have ever doubted your abilities to perform like just like in your mind to where you're like ah, I can't I'm not going to be as good as that person yeah it's pretty common yeah I see Morgan saying me that's the one of the most common things that we can do as humans is say I can't I'm not going to be yeah Colin I'm not going to be good enough I'm not going to be what everybody wants me to be when really you're the one that has to decide what you want to be within yourself. So what are, can I hear some of your all's goals? Would somebody like to share a goal they have for themselves that sometimes you doubt or that you have second guesses about? It can be anything it can literally be school related or friendship related competition of course <laughs> so so i have any guesses um i competed like any competitions for the special olympics mm -hmm. um well and this year i competed state flag football over the weekend so Thank you. Yeah, that's, I claim a bronze medal. So that's amazing. That's awesome, Allie. Allie, do, 
what are some of, of your goals that you have either with um, any of your, your sports that you do with Special Olympics or just other goals that you may have in, in your life? Can you think of, I know we've talked a lot about the, the SMART goals. Can you, do you think of um, anything off the top of your head? Yeah. <laughs> so my SMART goals and, and I have, I have been exercising a lot of times and it's not like that. Yeah. So that exercising more is a, is a great, a great yes. goal and using those SMART goals is a great way to help you stay in line with it for yeah. sure. I love SMART goals. It's one of the things we teach at the program that we created for mentorship. It's just understanding how to set goals and how to set SMART goals. And sometimes they're scary. Sometimes it's, you don't know. Yeah. I mean, I bet when you went into your flag football championship, were you nervous, Allie? Um, a little bit, but I got excited for it. So yeah. that's great. You can overcome some of those just by being excited that you're there. I have a, I have one. Yeah. So like for me, my goal is to like not be, I guess like nervous or scared about how like tired and um, just how hard the like game's going to be because I know that I'm going to like get really tired and it's going to hurt and stuff. So sometimes I feel like I like kind of like wuss out. So that's like my goal to like, <laughs> that's why I get that. Like, you know, I'm like Caroline, I'm like, ah, man. This is yeah. going to suck, but I really enjoy doing it. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of like my goal is to look at it like it is what it is. Like you like doing it. You just got to realize that. Yeah. Like in swimming, like I was the same way. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so terrible. But uh, yeah. just like getting over that hump, like especially in like, it's weird because when I'm training by myself, I can train crazy hard because I'm like, you know the confidence in yourself you're not worried about what other people are thinking but I feel like when I'm in the game I'm like oh man am I trying hard enough or am I being a baby so like that's one of my goals is to like not worry about that but also just like if you work hard like that's all you can worry yeah about. yeah it's easy to get caught in that future mindset of worrying like what if this happens what if this happens what if this happens? yeah what one of my goals is 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 a right now be be because I cannot go back to um Dairy Queen because because of um COVID I I've been helping all around campus doing some um, errands for for like different people and and trying to help help all around our campus and um, do and um, do some stuff. That's great, Kevin. Yeah, while while you can't go back to your job, yep. you, you're finding ways to be productive and yep. keeping that goal of, of being productive and yep. going back to Dairy Queen. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Yep, that's for awesome. like ten years, I will be in in November. Amazing. Yep, it is wow, important, wow. like you said, wow. to find other ways. Yep. To make to make that goal happen because it doesn't have to be in the same space either that you always have it in. Yep. You can always make a better reality for yourself, which yes. I think is really, really great. That's awesome, Kevin. Thanks for sharing that. I think it's interesting too to think about this amount of self-talk that we have in our in our heads about certain things like Colin was saying when we when we get afraid of, of what can happen in the future and then that was really cool to see Kevin also say well you can be you can have like oh no like what if I can't ever go back but then he's like well I'm going to make the best of it in this situation and Colin said the same thing like I'm going to make the best of it by doing what I can control because there's so many things that we can't control but what we can control is ourselves and that's all we can control. And Allie, you've probably felt the same way in your flag football. It's like, I can control me, you know, and I can control what I can do here, but I can't control my everybody else. We have to work as a team for sure, but I can't do something for them. I can only control me, right? Yes, <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
There's something I like to, to teach too that um, for self-talk, and then we're gonna get into a little bit of breathing stuff, is sometimes I picture, you know, when we talk about angel and, and devil, when you have like an angel on one shoulder and devil on the other shoulder, well, we like to call it like the gremlin and the angel because the gremlins, the kind of like, you know, just like angry and like, you can't do this. It's not necessarily like devil, but it's just like a grumpy, a grumpy old person. <laughs> you can't do it. You're not good enough. You can't do this. Well, we like to, we like to talk about how the gremlin is actually not you. Like you, you aren't the thoughts. Those thoughts are just visitors. So whenever you have these negative thoughts, picture them as just, it's just a visitor. It's just a gremlin that comes in and tells you something, but you can kindly ask it to leave. And you can kindly say, please do not tell me these things because that is not true. So if you view it as not yourself, then you won't be so hard on yourself. You view them, you observe it. You're like, that's not me. That's just the gremlin telling me I can't do it. But I'm, I know I can do it. So that's an a, a easy way to start thinking about whenever I doubt myself, let's try and remember it's not you. You're not the problem. It's the, the gremlin that, that's trying to convince you that you are not good enough. But that, but you can ask that thing to leave. <laughs> that's a, it's it's a helpful thing because then you think about it I was in a way kidding. that's not so hard on yourself. And I see Kevin. You said you have a question. I got a a question uh, about the Olympics for you. Yeah, I want to hear it. All right, all right. I I got two things. I love watching swimming, and I and 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 I love watch I I love watching all all of the sports there. How from um, one year from COVID to a couple of years be, before COVID? How how it is it different be, be between those two times? Mm. Well, I didn't go this time in COVID, but I will yeah. say this. When I went to China, and Colin can vouch for this, we weren't allowed out of the village, really. And, oh, and we had to um, be bused on a bus to each venue. Like, you couldn't walk outside the village. There's security in and out. So I honestly think it's just, it's, China had many rules in the first place, and that was one of them. Like, you had to wear masks even when you went out in Beijing because the air quality was so bad. So to be honest, I sometimes wonder if we were very quarantined in that way, just because, you know, the athletes don't really realize a lot because you're quarantined. But I will say this, the, the spectators, the people that could come watch, there were no spectators this time, which was really hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, they like Colin could come to Beijing when he was younger, but nobody could watch it this time around. Yes, yeah. Colin. And, yes, we're going to talk about that in a second too. That's so good. And um and 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 I cannot wait for um February for for the Winter Games. Yes, I know. Me too. Those are my favorite. I love watching it mainly because I can't ever yep. imagine doing Excuse any of those things. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do a single, like I cannot ski. I cannot snowboard. I'm determined to learn, but I'm just not very good at it. I think I'm too, I'm, I'm too uh, tall and lanky. <laughs> what, what, ev what events did, did, did you do at, at the Olympics? I did the four by 200 freestyle relay. So I swam a 200 Ooh. freestyle. Oh, it was fun. That's cool. Swimming I have my medal right hard. here yeah. that I want to show you. And then I want to talk about what Colin just said, but I'm going to show you my medal. Cause I brought it down for you guys. So this was our medal. It, it this is bronze. And oh, so cool. on this side, there's Jade, oh, which is the stone of China. And then each medal had a different color. Um, and then the band just says Beijing. Cool. 
Beijing, 2008. Yeah, yeah. that's so awesome. Wow. Yeah, it was, it's pretty cool. It feels like so long ago now. But you know, it's funny. I, I never really measured my success based on medals or accolades or anything. I, I kind of, I, I view this as just like a, like a culmination, like a, like a result of good experiences and determination, you know, and that can come in so many different shapes and forms, which I think is important to remember as athletes too, you know, that the medals are amazing, but all the memories and all the determination and practices and training and times being together, like that's the most important part that I remember from all of it, at least. Um, yeah, that's such a great way to, to look at it and frame the experience. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. A lot, a lot of Olympians sometimes give their medals away. <laughs> I know <laughs> Caleb Dressel handed it to somebody, a little boy in the stands, I think. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, cause I, cause, cause I think you start to recognize like it's so important and it's an amazing memory, but also the memories are just so much bigger and the experience is so gigantic and it just swallows you whole and there's so many things you have to kind of sift through and, and feel and and understand which is is neat and it, you learn so much about yourself I know um after my career and this is something Colin just brought up um yeah the medals because you love doing it and Colin just brought up you know thoughts can literally change your body and your reaction after my career ended I was like what do I do you know what do I do now and this was something that in 2000, I think I ended it in 2010 or 11. It was just like this giant, like I was so confused. I was like, what do I do now? Who am I without all of that? And it's really important to understand and to remember that like, we are so much more than what we do. You know, what you do is just an extension of you. It's just something fun that you can participate in and something that you can um, understand better about yourself. But when I went through that really hard time, it was so hard on my body, like what Colin said, because my thoughts were so negative and you have, you know, you go, I went through back to what we were talking about just a couple of minutes ago, everyone, our, our, our thoughts can be so hard on us. And I started to make that so true about myself. Like I'm not good enough. I don't know who I am without this. And and, you know, so many people can look at an Olympic athlete and be like, how could you be upset? Like you, you know, you have a medal. How could you possibly be upset or, or sad or down or have some depression or anything like that? And it's very easy to do because you have this feeling like you've let everybody down or you didn't do enough. And, and there's so many different emotions that, that weighed on me heavily. And I ended up having to, you know, really just dial my life in and understand, okay, what is it about what I'm going through that's so difficult? And for me, there were so many other, other experiences in college that added to this, but you know, all in all, I had to really figure out who am I as a person? Like who am, who am I without swimming, without my sport? And it's a very, very hard question to answer. Sometimes you have to say, Oh God, gosh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who that person is. But then you can really realize like you are whole and complete just as you are. Like you don't need to do anything to feel significant. Those are just things that you can do to increase your life experience and to, and to understand yourself better. So that was the biggest lesson, I think, after the Olympics. Um, and what Colin said, you know, the thoughts can change your body, which I want to, I want to get into some actual practical ways that we can work through the negative thoughts and also work through times when we feel nervous or anxious, it's not only in sport, but for anything, anything at all. So I want to have everyone is everyone in a place where they can kind of just like relax. Like you have, you have your chair, you're, you're just hanging out. You're all good. Okay. So I want to go over some breath work. Um, oops. Did I just cut out? No, you're good. I'm back. I want to go through some breath work techniques that are really helpful for when 
you become overly anxious, nervous, um, when your body feels the stress and the pressure that your thoughts are creating. So remember our bodies can actually feel and experience the nerves. You know, when you become anxious and people say my stomach hurts, or, you know, when you become anxious and you have sweaty palms or you're just kind of shaky or what are some other things, or have you ever just noticed yourself holding your breath? <laughs> You'll be like, <sighs> you take a really big, deep breath because you've been holding your breath because you're nervous for something. Sometimes I do it while I'm driving. Sometimes I do it while I'm working. Sometimes, yes, Morgan said all the time. It's so easy to do. All of a sudden you realize oh my gosh, I haven't even been checking into my breath. Our breath is the single most important thing that can keep us going. Without our breath, we become dysregulated. And when we are dysregulated, we don't, we don't think clearly. We start to get more anxious and more nervous. And then sometimes it can lead to other emotions that may not even be necessary in that moment. But simply because the biological component so like the, the bodily experience we have when we breathe actually makes us think clearly. It actually puts us in a better headspace. So we're going to do uh, two things today. We're going to do one called box breathing. And we're going to do another one called take five. Which one do you all want to do first? You can tell me. Either one. Okay. Have you done any of these before? No. Okay. We're going to start with, uh, Kevin said, take five. We'll start with take five. Okay. So here's your hand. Okay. We're going to count on our hand, the breaths that we take. Okay. So with that, we, we inhale to the tip of your finger and we exhale back down. Okay. So we're going to do this five times and I'll lead it and everyone feel free to close your eyes. Okay. So I won't be looking or anything. Close your eyes and just follow my breath, okay? And I'll, I'll cue you, inhale, exhale. Ready? Inhale, one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Next finger. Inhale, one, two, three. Exhale, one, two, three. Next finger. Inhale. One, two, three. Exhale. One, two, three. Next finger. Inhale. One, two, three. Exhale. One, two, three. Last one. Big inhale. One, two, three. Let it all out. Two, three. Oh, how does everybody feel after just taking some breaths? Do you notice a small difference? I was going to say, I feel good. I just wanted to mention I have a poster in my room from one of my favorite video games that says it goes count to four, inhale, count to four, exhale. It, but like he's like an army guy or whatever, yeah. but that's what he said, like in the intro to the game he always like remembered that to like remain calm so yeah. that's like similar you know a lot of that's a really good point and you can make any image that you want you can do the waves coming in the shore and out the shore you can do like a you can picture like a spiral going in and then spiraling the other direction like you can make any image that you want but i promise you this will change your life like it is so powerful in those moments when you are feeling stressed when you are feeling nervous when you are feeling anxious to just stop and pause and just take five and then the other one that colin just said is actually very similar to box breathing so you actually trace a box so when you inhale, you go up, exhale, you go to the side, inhale down, exhale, complete the box. So you can draw a box in your mind to the count of four, or depending on how, 
much you want to inhale and X, you can count to five or six and then exhale the same amount, but four is usually a good number. So you just but you always want to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Reason being is because if we can inhale through our nose best we can, we get more oxygen to our brain and it calms you down. And have you ever seen before races athletes that you see go like this, right? I see Serena Williams do it before every serve. Because when we can have that big inhale and exhale, we're allowing our body to just whew, prepare, shake it off. When we hold our breath, we become tense and tight. Only time to just hold your breath is when you're actually doing breath work to where you're clenching everything up and then releasing. And that's another option. So you take five box breathing. And then the last one I want to tell you is if you really, 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 really want to calm down and relax. Something I like to call progressive muscle relaxation, which is really cool. You can like clench your fist and then relax it. And you do that with the count of your breath. So when you can do that with your upper body like this, can do that with your jaw, can do that with your feet or your legs or whatever it is that you want to do that works for you and your body, you get to choose. Does that make sense to everyone? Does that feel good? I think this, I would love to challenge everyone here to do that at least once a day for the next week. And you can tell Trent how you feel or Colin and they can tell me, but try it every day. Even if you do it at the same time when you're not stressed, I bet it prevents the stress. I would do it at the beginning of the day, like after you brush your teeth, because then like, if you don't want to go to class or whatever it may be, you can be like, I got this, like after you do it and you'll feel like less stress. Cause you're like, at the end of the day, it is just the class, whether I get a hundred or a zero, it doesn't matter. Cause mm -hmm. I'm trying to learn. Whereas I feel like a lot of times we kind of like think, like you said, fear, like you have a fear of something that's not real that you're worried about. When in reality, if you just sit and write it down or do an exercise like breathing, you'll be like, that's kind of stupid. I, I can do this. That's not a big issue. I can go forward. Yes. And, and also remember that a lot of times there's so many things that we get flooded with information in this world. There's so much out there. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And at the end of the day, keep it simple. Coming back to your breath 10 times out of 10 will always allow you to perform better, to think more clearly, to, to feel better, to your body feels better. So next time you want to jump to what should I do? I, I, this feels like hard and I'm nervous. Go back to your breath. That's it. Even, even if it's like a stressful day in society and there's something on the news that's stressful or you hear something or somebody makes you angry same thing somebody says something mean same thing go back to your breath it always works and and it's the power of the pause instead of reacting you can pause and step back and the thing that you can control is your own breath and your own body and what you can control is the most important so keep it simple, you can do the, the take five, the box breathing, and then the progressive muscle relaxation or just clench and release is something I like to call it. Does anybody have any questions about that stuff that I talked about? It can be anything. You can even ask a specific question. So like you're a swimmer, 
but you can't breathe during your race obviously I mean obviously you're breathing to like stay alive while you're swimming but in a sport like rugby or football would doing it like multiple times or like in between a player like if you're off to the side like not involved in that like possession or whatever should you like do that if you find yourself like should you just take one deep breath yes so the the that's a great question Obviously there's a lot of times we can't just be like, stop the game. I'm going to take five, <laughs> right? Like we, we can't do that. And we, and that's important to remember, right? If you're in the middle of doing something, you can't be like, I'm going to stop everybody else's thing. But something that you can remember and that Colin, that's a good question is that yes, when you inhale and hold it even just for a split second and then <sighs> exhale, you'll notice your body completely relaxes in that moment. One giant inhale and a small pause, and then a big exhale will allow you to completely reset your physical state in that amount of time. And that's why, have you ever heard, you know, we all talk about it, but no one really knows the, the actual psychology behind it, but everyone says, calm down, calm down, take a deep breath. That's actually for a reason because Taking a deep breath allows us to, all right, let's reset this. Because what it does is it sends a chemical signal to your brain that releases that calm down effect. I can, I can recenter. So if you think about it in the opposite way, if somebody has asthma and they're... <laughs> they're usually stressed out, right? Like, cause they can't get a full breath. So if we can learn how to train our breath, sometimes we can even prevent those things. I know my friend has really bad asthma and she started doing breath work every day and it's helped her asthma tremendously, even just through training herself how to breathe deeply. Cause when we can train our bodies, remember our brains and our bodies are connected, right? So when we can train it all together, we can learn how to do it together. No matter what, there's even something super small we can do. That would be nice. This is good for yoga. I know you all did chair yoga. This would be great for that. You can do this really anytime. So your breath follows you everywhere you go. Hey, Caroline. Yeah. Would you show us how to do that box thing? What you yeah. were talking about? Yes. Let's do it together. We're going to oh. count to four, okay? All right. Each time, all right? So everyone, again, close your eyes and get comfy. And just picture yourself tracing a box, the shape of a box in your mind, okay? Ready? And inhale. Two, three, four. Exhale. Two, three, four. Inhale two, three, four, exhale, two, three, four. You can do that as many times as you want. You can do that three times, four times, but take a second to just trace that box at least one or two more times on your own. I'll do it with you. How's that feel for everybody? Good. So let's see if we can do a miniature challenge there every day. Let's try and do the breath. You could do it every hour if you want. 
sometimes I do it multiple, multiple, multiple times a day, depending on how much there is going on. And you know what else is a good trick is if you're activated by loud noises, like I personally don't like dump trucks and they come by twice a week where I live and they're really loud outside my window. I, if I have the time, I stop and I do my breath because, <laughs> because they, they, I don't know why I don't like them. I just don't like, <laughs> they're so loud. And so I just have to like, even little things like that, like even little things like that, that, that just can be bothersome. Everybody has their thing, right? Well, dump trucks are definitely mine. So <laughs> they can be really loud and obnoxious here. And we all live really close here in California. So there's not a lot of space. It's like New York at sometimes, but you know, it's important to, yeah, so loud and so early and sometimes, sometimes so long, like they drive so slow and they take forever. And then it's been 25 minutes of dump truck noises. <laughs> So you can get 25 minutes of breathing in, but there's just little things like that that can sometimes be so helpful. And Kevin, what were you going to say? I, I was going to say, maybe if we do this breathing thing, it, it might help us get through, through to this COVID thing. If, if we maybe breathe like every single day and maybe try to do like exercise, it might help us get it back to maybe our, our normal life one day. Yeah. I believe that. And also, you know what this breath work does is it strengthens your lung muscles. So your lung muscles are going to be stronger. Yes. So that when you, in every year that we get older, we get stronger with our, our breath and with our lungs because we are able to work them because our lungs are a muscle, you know, Yes. they're just muscles right there. So when we have those muscles working and working properly, we're able to do so much. So that's my challenge for you. And I'm going to make sure that Trent and Colin let me know next Wednesday, the day before oh, Thanksgiving, how it's going for everybody. How does that sound? Yes, I hear this, especially I, I just got a message from Luke saying there's loud semis and they go by. Yes, totally. Trucks are annoying and loud <laughs> and they can be, you know, we don't realize how annoying they can be for us especially if you're trying to focus on something else. It's like, I'm like, what's that? What's that? <laughs> so the breath can help us zone in and focus. Does that sound good for everybody? Yeah. Take five box breathing and you can clench and release. And remember the self-talk that you have is not you, it's the gremlin. So don't take ownership of those thoughts. They're just visitors. You can kindly ask them to leave. They don't have to stay and pay rent in your head. Does that sound good? Yes. Hey, Trent. Yes, sir. Do we do we not come back now until December? That's sometime in December, right? Yeah. So I, we so we will be back for um, our last one, um, maybe December. So we actually have one more after that, December fifteenth, I think. Don't quote yeah. me on that, but. So we have one more after that one. So it'll be a two week challenge. So try, see if you can, uh, uh, can do the, do the breath work every day Perfect. for two weeks. And then I'll, that. I'll, I'll be sure to relay the information. Two week challenge. I love it. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, if you have any more questions, I'm here. Anybody have any? Any final burning questions? No worries if not. <laughs> you can always ask me later if you have them or you can tell Trent or Colin, they can ask me and I can tell you. Yeah, absolutely. It was so well, lovely to meet everyone. Yeah, it was so yes. awesome to, to have you on. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Yeah, I wanted to give something simple and effective that we often overlook and forget about. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. It's a very true thing. Breathing makes such a, such a huge difference and it is often overlooked. Um, yeah. Yeah. All thank right. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you all for joining us. Yes. Thanks for having me. And thanks for, thanks to Colin for suggesting that I come hang out with you all.
Yes, Bye, absolutely. Mary. <laughs> have to come back. Oh, you're muted, I think. You're going to have to come back. I know, I'm going to have to come back. You were great. Congratulations on your job today. I, I got to listen to it. I'm multitasking. I'm not going to pretend. I love the <laughs> you're fine. I totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> I do right. it all the time. <laughs> Go Thank Special you. Olympics. Thank Yay. you. Thank you, everyone. It was good to see you. You too. Have right. a good day. Thanks. Bye, Colin. See you, everyone. Have a great holiday. You too. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.